Hello? Yep, there we go. Huh. What's up, everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. Uh, and I hope that you're all having yourselves a great day. They said an anticipated start time was at 8 o'clock p.m., and that usually doesn't mean that it starts on time, so I didn't really know like, when to start the clock or anything. But, yeah, all right, so we're underway. Here we go. So the first pitch is just a little bit below the knees for a ball. But I hope you're all doing well. Wow. You guys are Philadelphia Phillies freaks. You really are. One ball, no strikes, and the pitch is down low and outside for ball two. So it was supposed to start at 1 o'clock, and then we got the update during the game last night. I wasn't even tuning into it because I was calling a Sixers game uh, that it was moved back to 4 o'clock today. Two balls, no strikes, and the next pitch inside for ball three. And then they kept pushing it back. They weren't communicating, and seven hours later, here we are. So you guys are literally Phillies freaks for being here and for waiting that long. Y'all are the best. Huh. All right, so this goes, by the way, okay, here's a fun stat right here. They just pulled it up on the NBC Sports app. The three one pitch swing and a miss to Jonathan India. We'll get uh oh, we'll get to that a little bit later. So the lineups. Let's get into the lineups, man. So Jonathan India is up at the plate right now. The payoff pitch coming from Wheeler in just a few seconds, and it's inside. And India draws a leadoff walk. So the lineups for the Cincinnati Reds. It's uh, Jonathan India over at second. Will Benson out in center field. Um, and then uh, you got uh, Encarnacion Strand over at first base. Uh, Jimmer Candelario over at third. Jake Fraley batting in the five spot. He's out in right field. Uh, De La Cruz, Ellie De La Cruz, that is over at shortstop. Spencer Steer out in left field. And Martinez, the DH, has the next pitch to Benson is fouled off. And uh, Tyler Stevenson uh, is, the, uh, is the catcher, and he's batting in the nine spot. Huh. All right, so uh, it snowballs one strike to Benson. Wheeler gets set at the letters, winds up, and throws a strike over on the inside corner. So the count is 0-2. There's a runner over at first. Again, it's India, Benson, Strand, uh, Candelario, Fraley, De La Cruz, Steer, Martini, and Stevenson. No balls, two strikes, and Wheeler gets set again. The next one is taken downstairs. Phillies defensively, from one through nine, it's uh, Wheeler, Riamuto, Harper, Stott, Merrifield, Turner, Marsh, Rojas, and Castellanos. One ball, two strikes to Will Benson. No scores were in the top of the first, and the one-two pitch swing and a miss, and Zach Wheeler records his first strikeout of the day, and there's one gone. Huh. Y'all are really... Y Y'all really are Phillies freaks. I think that that's what we're going to call you guys now. You know what I mean? Like, we have uh, my boy DJ Eastwood has uh, a term called Sixer Sickos. I like Phillies freaks. I don't think that that's been used, so I really like that. First pitch to Encarnacion Strand is taken for a ball right down low. Strand is three for nine in the series. Batting 182 on the season with a homer and two RBI. India walked. Benson struck out. Strand at the plate. One gone in the top of the first. Wheeler on the bump. And the 1-0 pitch. Line drive. Caught over by Stott. That was actually played on a bounce by Stott. Throw over the second. There's one. And the throw back to first. Not in time. Couldn't tell in real time as soon as they went back over towards the second base side. So Stott played it on a hot shot. He had to play it on a bounce, throw it over to Trey Turner, who was covering second. And that's a 4-6 fielder's choice ground out. And we go into out number two. <sighs> it's better now. My connection uh, might have been your connection. Probably was. Two gone in the top of the first inning with a runner at first. And the pitch swing and a miss. Nice fastball thrown by Zach Wheeler. So Candelario batting 150 on the season with a homer and two runs batted in. Over at first is Strand. And at the plate is Candelario batting on the left side. And he stares at a fastball that's at the on the inside corner for a strike. 
Uh, the crew chief for tonight, Chat Whitson, the home plate umpire, Malachi Moore over at first. Bill Miller is at second, and Doug Eddings over at third base. No balls, two strikes, and the 0-2 pitch, swing and a miss. So Wheeler gets two strikeouts to end the first inning. No runs, one man left. And we go to the bottom of the first in Philadelphia as the Phillies are coming up to bat. How about this? So um, the longest rain delays in Phillies history, okay, this one, it technically, because it was pushed back to four, it was really three hours and 55 minutes. So this one right here is the sixth longest rain delay in Phillies history. Um, the other, and uh, the, the number one, the first longest game was on July 2nd of 1993. It was versus the San Diego Padres. That was game one of the season to start off the 93 season. And that rain delay was five hours and 54 minutes. The second longest one is when they also made it to the World Series. They ended up winning that year. On June 9th of 1980 versus the San Francisco Giants. That was a five-hour rain delay. About that. So, all right. So, lineup coming up for the Phils. We're in the bottom of the first inning. Kyle Schorber will be leading things off for the Fightins. And then it'll be Trey Turner, Bryce Harper, JT Realmuto, Bryson Stott, Nick Castellanos, Brandon Marsh, Whit Merrifield, and Johan Rojas. So Schwarber's DHing, Turner's over at short, Harper's at first, Riamuto's catching. Number five is Bryson Stout, who's over at second. The right fielder is Castellanos. Brandon Marsh is the left fielder, batting seventh. Whit Merrifield, the third baseman, batting eighth. And Johan Rojas, batting ninth. He's out in center field. So, uh, yes. So that is the lineup for the Phillies. And on the bump for the Cincinnati Reds will be uh, Frankie Montas. So Montas will be on the mound. He pitched in one outing. Started off the season pitching game one. And here's Kyle Schwarber up at the plate. And he looks at a slider that misses the zone pretty badly. Montas spent a lot of time with the Oakland Athletics. Schwarber this season batting 273 with a homer and two RBI. The pitch, ground ball, shot over towards the first base side, and Encarnacion Strand has it, and they'll take it over to the bag. So Montas went six innings in his last outing. He had four strikeouts, and that was against the Washington Nationals. Didn't allow a run in that game. Wasn't there a rain delay, and the game didn't end until like 4 a.m.? Uh, that could be the case. There was also a rain delay on my birthday. It was again in 1977 versus Montreal in that that one was for four hours and 56 minutes. One out in the bottom of the first. And Turner takes a strike right down the heart and soul of the plate. Turner batting 263 with two RBI on the season. No balls, one strike, one gone, and the 0-1 low. Oh. So There was a time where the Cubs and the Reds had a rain delay, but it was actually postponed after eight hours and 15 minutes. Which is crazy. Two balls, one strike as the next pitch is low. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Nobody on one out, and the pitch popped up over towards the third base side in foul ground. Who's going to get under it? It'll be caught right over at the third base side by Gmer Candelario. And there's two away. So a foul out by Trey Turner over to third. Defensively for the, for the Cincinnati Reds as Bryce Harper is due up at the plate. We'll get you that in just a few moments. Uh, two gone, nobody out. Or, 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 sorry, two gone, nobody on base. Wow. And the first pitch to Harper is taken upstairs for a ball. 
So, Bryce, of course, the big storyline is that he had three homers in last night's game, including a grand slam. Here we go. One ball, no strikes. Five seconds left on the pitch clock, and the 1 0 pitch swing and a miss on a splitter at 86 miles per hour. Defensively, of course, for the Reds, they got from 1 through 9, it'll be Montas, Stevenson, Str uh, Strand, India, Candelario, Steer, or sorry, Cruz. And then in the outfield, it's Steer, Benson, Fraley. Those are the outfielders. So 1-1 one, one delivery fouled back. Y'all are Phillies freaks. Y'all spent seven hours waiting for this game. Really, it was three hours and 55 minutes. But y'all deserve a round of applause for waiting that long and for taking time out of your day to do that. The one-two pitch. There's a slow roller over to third base. Bear handed by the third baseman throw over the first. Not in time. Bryce Harper able to beat that one out. Candelario tried all he could to just field it on a couple of bounces and barehand it. But it's a infield single by Bryce. And that's now his fourth hit in his last five at-bats. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icons, and that way you know when I go live. My name is Jason Joseph. We're on for Phillies baseball, Sixers basketball, and Eagles football, man. And again, apologize for the late start. When they say anticipated start, that doesn't always mean that they're going to start on time, and I don't like to start my stream until I actually know that it's official. First pitch to JT, fouled away. July of 1992, rain delay. Game ended at 3.23. Yeah, that rain delay, and then see that one on the NBC Sports app. See how long that lasted, but that was a long one. Harper leads off over at first, and the pitch, swing and a miss. Nice pitch by Montas there. And it's an 0-2 count. Huh. <sighs> Well, the Phillies weren't the only game that was in a rain delay. There were a couple of games that were postponed. We'll talk more about that during the inning break. The 0-2 to JT, swing and a miss. And Monta strikes him out on the splitter that he goes chasing after in the dirt. No runs, one hit, and one man left. And we play on and go to the top of the second inning at the bank. Sure missed JJ yesterday. Oh, thanks, Will. Yeah, we were doing the Sixers game on RB's channel. So, And then we had uh, DFJ Hoops. Shout out to him, man. Shout out to him for uh, for covering us on my channel. You know, I, I, I want to – the thing is, guys, is that, like, I was going to have Snowman do, like, last night's game for the Phillies because I – I want you guys to be able to hear, like, other people, too, like, besides me, like, whenever I can't do it. So I want to give you guys something to consume, and I really wanted to try to, like, get my broadcasting friends more involved and have them promote their stuff and that type of a thing. Like, that's really, like, what this is for. I know that I can't always be doing every single game, but I like to give people opportunities. This is a field where if you get an opportunity and you go for something, you take it. And if, uh, y y you know, like that's that's just how I am. I like to give people opportunities around my platform because not everybody has a platform. So that's the way I roll. So um, what was I going to say? So we go on to the top of the second inning. Fraley, De La Cruz, and Steer will be due up for the Cincinnati Reds. That's who's coming up. So what were you doing during those seven hours, guys? Comment down below if you were doing anything cool or if you were just cleaning dishes or whatever it was. Comment and let me know what you have to say. This is this is real dedication, man. This is real dedication from all y'all just by being here. Jason says, I can't believe we're playing this game. Still, it's nasty outside. Well, this is this is what they do, man. They weren't straightforward with us, and, you know, it is what it is. We're playing, and I'm happy to be calling the game. But we're in the top of the second inning. Next up to bat is Fraley, who's the right fielder. Jake in this series is just one for four. First pitch by Wheeler. 
Swinging a foul ball back over towards the screen. The count is 0-1. Fraley this season, though, is 6 for 12. Batting 500. 301 delivery, swing and a miss. So that'll make the count now 0 and 2. No balls, two strikes. We were get set above the letters. Kicks, fires the pitch, swing and a fly ball. It's hit out towards shallow right center field. Stott gets under it over towards the alleyway and will make the catch just in between Rojas and Castellanos. So a pop out over to Bryson Stott, and now Ellie De La Cruz is coming up. Tim Kelly said last night in regards to Bryce Harper's home run that Harper, quote, is the first Philly to hit three homers in a game at Citizens Bank Park since Jason Worth did it in 2008. The pitch bowed away, but he also followed that up and said he's the first Philly to hit three homers in a game anywhere since Brad Miller did it in 2021. No ball is one strike, and the pitch, line drive laser, but it's fouled over towards the right field side. The count is 0-2. I remember Brad Miller's three home run game. That's why they called him Bamboo Brad. <laughs> the 0-2 on the way, swing and a miss. Ellie De La Cruz has really been struggling in this series and is now 2 for 10. He also made two errors yesterday. And there's two away. The third strikeout by Zach Wheeler. JJ, you were in for RBE Live last night. Love your love your substitute teaching. Thanks, man. <laughs> we weren't. I wasn't gonna go hardcore with the play by play. I wanted to kind of, you know, change things up a little bit for you guys because I wanted to learn more about you, you know. But on here, that's what we do. Spencer Steer stares at a fastball right at the knees. No balls. One strike, the 0-1, fouled back towards the screen. Steer hit the grand slam to give the Reds a 6-2 lead in the 6-3 win that they had on Monday night. Two outs, nobody on. The ball's two strikes. We were looking for a strikeout number four. The pitch, outside, and off the plate. In the on-deck circle is Martini, and in the hole, it is Stevenson. The one-two on the way, low and off the plate. My volume's low? I don't think it's low. I think it's just you. Is that for anybody else, though? Two balls, two strikes, and the next pitch swing and a miss. Four strikeouts for Zach Wheeler. He had two in the first and two to end the second. There's a 1-2-3 inning, and the side is retired. We go to the bottom of the second. Philly's trying to get on the board. Okay. Low audio. Is it really low? All right, how about now? Is this better? Is that better for you? All right. Hmm, that's weird. Really hoping Shorby can keep this uh, EA up. It's weird because I didn't even, like, didn't even play around with it. What the heck? Huh. No, that doesn't help. Mike says that it's fine there. Let me listen to my mic on YouTube because it could just be you, Larry. Anybody else having that problem? Not bad, but usually I'm louder. Hmm. Let me see. Like I said, no. Also fine, maybe. That's not louder. Okay. All right. Here's what we'll do. Uh, we'll make the input a little bit louder like this. How about that? This is like literally like max. What the heck? Can you hear me testing one, two, three? Is that better? 
now. The fader, like I've, I literally have the fader up like almost all the way. So that's really, really weird. Is this in? All right, here comes Bryson Stout up at the plate. And he looks at a cutter that's outside and off the plate for ball one. Okay, that's like really, really loud. That's not like how I keep it before, so that's a little bit weird. Okay. The 1-0 on the way, the stat. Fly ball, hit out towards shallow right field. Fraley and India, who's going to get it? India has to come running in because the wind took it by a little bit. And he'll make the catch. He hit the chase after it. It was hit a mile high. Stock got way under it. And there's one gone. Winds are really blowing in. It's 8 21 p.m. Eastern Time. Nice play by India, too. That's just a tough read. Sometimes you think that the ball's going to go a little bit deeper, and then it just, as it's in the air, you got to chase after it. Castellanos will step up to the box. And he swings and fouls a sinker just at the plate. It's been one of the Phillies hitters that's been struggling. Just batting under 170. The pitch. Jack swing. Did he go? First base umpire says no. And that is Malachi Moore. If you haven't done so already, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon so that way you'll know when I go live for a Phillies, a Sixers, or an Eagles game. Put our heart and soul into this, man. Two seconds left on the pitch clock. Montas gets set and delivers the pitch. And Castellanos stares at a cutter at the knees. First called strike. One ball, two strikes. The one, two. Down low, good take by Casti. So Nick Castellanos, again in the series, has uh, so far been 0 for 8 with three strikeouts. I'd like to see him try to get a little groove here. The 2-2 two -two on the way. Popped up again over towards the first base side in foul ground. And the catcher takes a look at it, and he and he could not make the catch. Tried to make the basket catch that was uh, Stevenson. And I don't know if they're going to call that an error or not. It looked like that he just lost it in the lights for a second. And Carnacion had to communicate with him. But it's still a 2-2 count, and Castellanos stays alive. Literally, like, went into the lights and probably just lost it. See how high it was. It actually goes way out of the frame. And Carnacion trims like he got it. And he just couldn't get there. The 2-2 pitch low and outside for ball three. Sometimes it's just tough when you're trying to stare at it. Literally bounced like right off of his chest. Tried to make the catch, but it's got to leave a little mark. Payoff pitch coming up. In just a few seconds, Montas gets ready, and the pitch. I hope that was in there for a strike, but Castellanos gets called for a walk. That's like the second time this season where an umpire has uh, not called what well, looks like a strike in the zone. Clearly it was, but said it was a little up high. And I'm sure that the Phillies will be thrilled about that. <laughs> Marsh steps into the box on the left side, and he tried to check his swing on the cutter, and the third base umpire said he did not go. <sighs> Marsh had three hits in last night's game. It was overshadowed, of course, by Bryce Harper's three hits, which were all home runs, including a grand slam. The 1-0 delivery, swing and a miss. That splitter came in at 85, and it sailed down low.
So one out. We're in the bottom of the second. No score in this Phillies-Reds final game. The pitch outside again for ball two. This was Marsh's uh, opposite field home run that he hit last night. Hit it out to left center field. They're just showing that right now. So 2 1 on the way. Line drive foul towards the left field side. Montas has had a lot of success versus Brandon Marsh. It was one for nine against him. And Marsh has struck out five of those times. Castellanos leads off over at first. The 2 2 pitch. There's a fly ball hit out to left field. It's hooking foul and it'll find the seats. Boy, that, that take a Big bounce. It was literally, I'd say, in about like the 25th row or so, and then it just bounced all the way towards the third row. Two balls, two strikes to Brandon Marsh. His hair's still wet. The beard, I don't know. Looks a little dry. And the pitch. Line drive out of the center field, but it's going to be caught right by the center fielder, Benson. Didn't really have to move too much. And Castellanos goes back to first. Hit sharply. Nice try. Close but no cigar. Crazy. So a line out to center. And Whit Merrifield is coming up to the plate. So there's two gone. What should have been the third out. Gives the Phillies a little bit of extra life. First pitch of high fastball. That was on the upper third of the zone. Now, Witt actually has had a lot of success versus Montas. He's 8 for 18 against him with a double. So he has really seen the ball well and has hit a lot of fastballs off of him. The 0 1 on the way. And Merrifield tried to show bunt, but he took it back. And it was a strike, anyways, at the knees. He's playing over at third base today for Alec Bohm. It was supposed to have the day off, but I guess you got to say it's the night off. No balls, two strikes. And Montaz looks back over at second, and Castellanos is in a rundown already. Cast The throw over to first. Castellanos will try to go over the second. Throw back to shortstop is in time. So, unfortunately, the Phillies don't get any runs in that inning, and that's the third time in this series where a base runner just does not know when to go and just really disappointing. We go to the top of the third. Phillies and Reds still scoreless. It's like, to be honest, it is like such a stupid way to make the final out of the inning. I, I've never understood that. You're literally off the bag, and, like, what's the purpose? <laughs> That's not a Rob Thompson thing. That's a basis coach thing. Whit Merrifield? Whit played for the Toronto Blue Jays, started off his career with the Kansas City Royals. He's a three-time All-Star, a uh, pretty good ball player. Still is pretty fast. But, yeah. That's not a Rob Thompson thing, Mike. That's a basis coach. That's that's Dusty, and that's uh, it's it's on both of them. It's on Paco Figueroa and Dusty Wathen. Uh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on the bell icons, and that way you know when I go live. We got, what, 41 people on here watching? Make sure you guys like and subscribe. We're on for the Phillies. We're on for the Sixers and the Eagles. And for all you Phillies freaks that are out there that have literally just spent all your day waiting for this game to be played, you guys deserve a round of applause, man, because that is what you call dedication, and that is called loyalty for your team. If that's not love, I don't know what is. <laughs> you know? That's the way I look at it. Final score predictions on this Phillies game? Comment down below.
the Thompson was a joke, but sometimes, but you're serious sometimes. Like, you actually agree, though, like, that that Jalen Hurts, that we said it the other day. Like, sometimes I, I take you seriously because you do mean it at times. The first pitch, there's a grounder rolled over to second base, bobbled by Stott, and Stott's just going to have to eat that one up. So it was uh, Martini that was at the plate. That's going to be recorded as an E4, and Stott just can't make that mistake. He bobbled it as he was trying to put it into his bare hand to throw it after he gloved it. So a leadoff E4 to start off this third. Let's see again. Actually, I'm sorry, it hit the, the heel of the glove. Didn't even get it into his glove, so I apologize about that. Just didn't field it properly. The pitch to Stevenson is in there for a strike. So Tyler Stevenson batting on the right side. He's catching behind the plate. Luke Maley caught the first game. Viewer still on the bump. The pitch fouled back. I know I should stop. Sometimes I don't know. <laughs> it's funny. But you do crack me up. You are a funny person, you know. It's addicting, though. Stevenson wants to call for time. Top of the order is... About ready to come on up. Look at Tom McCarthy and Cruck. They have their uh, they have their winter hats on. Is that a Philly scarf that McCarthy's wearing? Looks pretty cool. No balls and two strikes. The 0-2. If it's up high. So the count is now 1-2. and two. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock once again. Four seconds to go, and the one-two by Wheeler. Check swing. Did he go? It was inside, and the home plate umpire said he did. They didn't even appeal, but JT tried to, and Zach Wheeler has his fifth K of the ball game. That's three innings in a row where he has recorded a strikeout. There's the Philly Fanatic trying to stay warm in the booth. He's with John Cruck and T Mac. Now he gets out of the booth. <laughs> sure, he's going to go on over to the radio side. And Anderson and Fransky are going to have to look at him. The pitch on the way is upstairs. What's that? Uh, is that a Schwarber sandwich? Is that one of those uh, Kyle Schwarber sandwiches that they just had that uh, the Fanatic brought up to the both of them to try? It's cool. The 1 0 on the way. It was a little bit high. I'm still a little confused as to why the home plate umpire, Chad Whitson, called the the pitch that was it was a 3-2 pitch to Castellanos. It was clearly on the upper third of the zone. He called that a he called it a ball, but one that was higher was I guess a ball too. I guess that kind of makes sense. Two balls, no strikes, and the pitch. It's inside. Again for ball three. I was rooting for the Phillies in the postseason last year, just FYI. What's up, man? Thanks so much for coming on. John David Walker. I kind of I think you were on here, my guy. Maybe not though. Maybe I'm just having deja vu. The pitch. In there for a strike on the upper third of the zone. It's a four seamer. A runner over at first. With one out. No score in the top of the third. Three one on the way. Another strike called. Got to lead off your day with a Schwarber sandwich for breakfast. I mean, it's, it's dinner time now. But who says you can't have breakfast for dinner, though? Those are actually really cool. I like breakfast for dinner sometimes. 3-2 pitch. The runner goes and it's fouled off. We'll have to do it again. Uh, so, not a lot of whole fans sitting here. There's still definitely some, though. You have to wait three hours and 55 minutes. I don't know how you stay warm. And do you, like, even, like, leave the park? Like, what do you do? Time is called by Jonathan India. He's one for eight in the series. He's scored two runs. He's playing over at second base. He was a DH in the first game of this series. 
Payoff pitch coming right up. Throw over to first, though, out in time. Three balls, two strikes to Jonathan India. Will Benson waits in the on-deck circle. And the payoff pitch, swing and a miss. Actually, it was a foul ball. I beg your pardon, but India does stay alive. And the Fanatic is still there. I don't really know what he's doing. The bell's cool. It's a red, white, and blue bell. Shining very brightly out towards the uh, right center field. Three balls, two strikes, and the next pitch inside. They actually hit India, and India gets on with a hit-by-pitch. That'll put two runners on. This is the first time. Actually, this is the second time of the season where Wheeler has had uh, two runners on. Not too many of those times in the first game, for sure. What's going on, Thomas? How you doing, man? Danny says you should expand your channel and call more Redscapes. Thanks, man. I appreciate that, dude. I really do appreciate that. One out in the top of the third. Actually, I got a funny story for you guys. Uh, Will Benson is up at the plate. There's one gun in the top of the third. But two runners on base, and Benson stares at a fastball at the knees for a called strike against Zach Wheeler. So um, there was this guy who went to my alma mater who – I, I got to call games for the Wilmington Blue Rocks, who were the high affiliate of the Washington Nationals when I was in college. And I did so with the Delaware Blue Coats, too. So the 01 is just a bit up high. Um, the first person to do that, that graduated from my college, and I still uh, am in touch with him on LinkedIn, is John Sadak. And Sadak, if you don't know, is the is the play by play announcer for the Reds on TV. The 1-1 one, one on the way. Harper plays it on a hop over towards first base, and the throw back to Wheeler is in time. So Wheeler just barely got over to the bag. That's going to advance the runners, though, at second and third. Benson really did have a good effort. It was a slow. It was a roller over towards the first base side. Harper had to play it, and he make the underhanded scoop over to Wheeler. And let's see if he was out. Yep, he got him just by less than half a step. Nice play by Harper, too. He thought about backhanded it. It almost slipped. Man, it does not look like that, that infield is safe to play on. Two outs, two runners on in this top of the third. And now Strand comes up and stares at the fastball in the upper third of the zone. So it's recorded as just a 3-1 ground out. So over at third is Martini, and over at second is India. The pitch upstairs. I was on here for game one of this series the other day. Oh, wow. Cool. That's cool. Do I think Pinto looks like Hunter Pence? I didn't watch last night's game, so I can't tell you. So 1-1 one, one pitch. Line drive down the line. It is a foul ball. Nice play by the ball girl, though. She had to play it. It literally hit the ground, then hit the... The net right where the tarp is, and it ricocheted right off the net and landed right into her glove. Reds fans rooting for Phil's last postseason, huh? That's cool. <laughs> I saw, is it the Reds unis? So time was called. There's two outs. We're in the top of the third. There's no score. Runners in scoring position, India. At second, and at third, it's Martini. The one-two pitch, swing on the fly ball, hit out to left field. It's carrying. It's going to go all the way towards the Novacare sign. Marsh plays it on a couple of bounces. Two runs come in to score. The throw to second, it's not in time. And there's a two-run double by Christian Encarnacion Strand, and that gives the Reds a 2 nothing lead. That was a hot shot just out to left field. Hit off the Novacare rehabilitation sign. Marsh did everything he could to just play it off that wall. But there's two runs given up by Zach Wheeler. It's a two-run double. And Jimer Candelario is due up, and he tries to dodge out of a way of a curveball that was way inside. 
That was just the first hit that Wheeler has allowed in this game, mind you. Encarnacion Strand leads off over at second. We were with 47 pitches, the 1-0 pitch. There's a fly ball hit out to center field. Roas gets underneath it, takes a couple of steps in towards home plate, and he'll make the catch, and the inning is over. However, Encarnacion Strand, Christian Encarnacion Strand, gets himself a two-run double, and the Reds take a 2-0 lead. We go to the bottom of the third. Huh. This broadcast is brought to you by Play by Play with JJ. Make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notification bells. That way you know when I go live for a Phillies, a Sixers, or an Eagles game. We're on for every single fi- we're on we're on for every single game, man. We really try not to miss a game unless we have something going on like a Sixers game like last night. But, you know, dedication, man. Dedication and hard work, that's what we do on here. If you are a Phillies freak, like all of us. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, y'all got to do that right now. We need 24 more subs in order for us to get to 1,900. So if you want to help the cause, make sure you do that. What's up, Snow? What's up, Gideon? What's up? What do you think of the supposedly leaked Philly City Connect jerseys? I like them. I think that they're cool. Um, I'd like to see them wear them. I still wish that they would re- wear the red uniforms, but I do kind of miss that. Uh, for me, I wanted to make sure I read it. Every th- I read everything. John David Walker says, for me, it's the, just the fact that I'm in the deep south with only the Braves as a team anywhere near me. Love the energy of CBP uh, in the postseason. Love the moxie of a really young Reds team. Yeah, well, the Reds have some, uh, the, the Reds have talent, man. There is no doubt about it. The Reds definitely do have some talent. And I think that there's a chance that they can win the division this year. I do. I I think that they can surprise teams. That NL Central is going to be tough, though. But, yeah. Errors kill. Yes, sir. Yep, Mike, our fielding has been less than stellar, and our base running has not been up to par either. So Whit Merrifield is due up, and he takes a strike. It was a slider at 81 miles per hour, just at the knees. So... Merrifield was up to bat in the last inning, but unfortunately Castellanos just got picked off and got into a rundown as he just was on base. He shouldn't have been on base anyways, but the fact that he was and he got into that rundown, just a a double negative. The pitch taken for a strike at the knees again. No balls, two strikes. Last season, Merrifield hit 272, had 11 home runs and over 60 RBI. The 0-2 on the way. It's a splitter, low, and just outside. In the on-deck circle for the Phillies, it's Johan Rojas. Montas gets set, kicks, fires the pitch. Fly ball, it's hit out to right field. It's going towards the line, and it's hooking foul. Merrifield's now uh, 35 years old. He uh, was born in Florence, South Carolina, and was the ninth-round pick by the Kansas City Royals. Made his debut the year after they uh, won the World Series in 2015. So That was in May of 2016. The pitch, it's low and outside again. So it's two balls, two strikes to Whit Merrifield. And Montas still on the bump. Just 35 pitches for him. About 50 for Wheeler. The 2-2 delivery outside. Good take by Whit Merrifield. Montas himself is 31. He's 6'2", 255 pounds. He's from the Dominican Republic. He also made his debut. That was actually the year before. That was in 2015. The 3 2 on the way. Swing and a miss. Oh, man. It was high and inside at 95 miles per hour. And that's the second time a Phillies batter has struck out against Montas today. I was a little bit shot that he decided to go with it, but it was a perfect pitch. Just great execution. 
There's one gone. Rojas still hunting for his first hit. He's batting in the nine spot. And he fouls that pitch off of the right knee of Stevenson. You get a wrench, JJ. No balls, one strike. And the next pitch, swing on a line drive foul. I'm not on YouTube right now. Um, in the break, I uh, um, I'll give you a wrench, my guy. Thirty-nine total pitches for Montas so far. Twenty-five strikes. Fourteen of them have been balls. One out, base is empty. In the 0-2, it's low for a ball. Mm. Montas, last year, just pitched in one game. Just went an inning and a third. One-two pitch. There's a little chopper hit over to third base. This is going to be a tough play for the third baseman, and he's just going to have to eat that one up. That's Dreamer Candelario, who had to barehand it. And Rojas beat it out. And that's how Johan Rojas gets his first hit of the season. So the two Phillies hits today have each been infield singles. Let's see again. So this was a a tapper hit over towards the third base side. Rojas definitely ran down that baseline and beat that one out by a mile. Now Kyle Schwarber is coming up as we flip the lineup card. And the first pitch, it's popped up right behind the plate, but it'll find the seats well beyond home plate. Kyle is 0 for 1. He grounded out in the first inning. Sitting 261 on the season with a homer and 2 RBI. Throw back to first. Try to get Roas not in time. Schwarber has 71 career hits against the Reds, 74 actually to be exact. Spent a lot of time facing them when he was on the Cubs. The pitch, low and inside for ball one. And during those 85 games, he's hit 23 homers and 58 RBI against them and has a 244 career batting average. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. And the one to one to Schwarber. He just takes it down low. They do check his swing, though. And they said that he went. I can't believe it. He's staring over at the third base umpire. He's saying, how did I go with that? And I didn't even think he went. Let's see again. Did he fully go? He may have, honestly. It was a better angle. The one-two on the way, and he looks at strike three right down Broadway. And Kyle Schwarber goes down looking. There's the first backwards K of the game for Frankie Montas. That's his second strikeout of the inning. What's up, Mike Sports Vibes? How you doing, man? What's going on? Hopefully you're all doing well, man. Mike Sports Vibes, get those likes up, baby. Two outs and a runner over at first. Turner, the tying run, comes up and he fouls the first pitch off towards the right field side. And it was so fun watching uh, the postseason with the Phillies last year up until game six and seven against the D-backs. I'm with you, man. Turner is 0 for 1. He fouled out in the first inning. Two outs in the bottom of the third. Rojas over at first. Montas on the bump for the Reds. And the 0-1 pitch swinging a towering fly ball. Hit out to deep left field. It's going to stay in the yard, though, as making the catch is steer just in front of the track. Turner thought he had it. Just barely got under it. And that's going to do it as we go to the top of the fourth. No runs, one hit, one man left. Reds up 2-0 in this final game at home at the bank for the Phillies. Mm. Okay, so Turner flat out to left. I got to charge this. Mm. I got to charge the iPad. In case you are new to the channel, my name is Jason Joseph, and this, of course, is Play by Play with JJ. What's up, DFJ? How you doing? Thanks again for filling in for me for the Sixers game last night. And to all of you 
Phillies freaks, to all you, to all y'all Phillies freaks that are out there that have been waiting three hours and fifty five minutes for this game to start, I commend you for, you know, taking a lot of time out of your day to do that. It really, really means a lot, and I love each and every one of you, man. Uh, JDW, right from the high to the low. Good Ian, please get us on the board, Schwarber. I will make sure that I give my boy the wrench because I did promise him. Just use it wisely, my guy. Of course, use it wisely, as always. Um, we'll pull up the YouTube channel. So, yeah, if you guys do enjoy my content, um, where's my keyboard? There it is. If you do enjoy my content, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Uh, what are your final score predictions, man? What are your final score predictions? Comment them down below. Mine is 5-3 to three Phillies. Um, I know it's already 2 nothing Reds. I expect the Phillies are going to come back, but that's just my take. What's yours, though? What is yours? We got 52 lovely people on here watching, which is incredible, and only 25 likes. Come on, man. Come on, baby. Would love to get you guys more involved with our community here. All right, so we'll... Who asked for the wrench? Jo uh, Jason did. We're in the top of the fourth. Jake Fraley is the next customer at the plate. And he looks at a pitch that's low and inside for ball one. So one ball, no strikes. And Fraley will send the next pitch over towards the first base side. Harper lost it, though, as he actually had it, but he was playing over towards the line. And he lost it for a quick second. It would have been hard to win the race of the bag. But there's an infield single. So where is, uh, oh, I think I missed it. I think I missed his, uh, there he is. There it is. Add you as a moderator. Okay, got you. Got you, my guy. Huh. Ellie De La Cruz will step into the left side of the box, and he stares at a pitch that's upstairs for ball one. We were still on the bump, 51 pitches for him. And the next pitch is a curveball at the knees on the outside corner for a called strike. So besides the two-run double that he allowed to Encarnacion Strand, he's been pretty sharp in this game so far. One ball, one strike. Wheeler stares at the glove of JT, gets ready, and throws a curveball that is wide. That'll make the count two and one now. Five to one, Phillies is your final score prediction. Cool. Phillies five to one. Right now it's two nothing. The two one, it's served out towards the left field side, but it'll find the seats again. Reds fan here. Thank you for the content. I'm at work, says Jim. <laughs> Thanks for coming on, man. Appreciate it. Two and two. That's the count. Wheeler again gets set at the letters, throws back to first, and Fraley stays put. He was not even going anywhere. Jim Meeks. That's cool. Hopefully you're having a good night, man. I'm sure that you expected this game to start at 4.05, but it didn't. This is what happens, man. This is what makes baseball baseball. Did you guys eat anything cool during this uh during this break or do anything cool? The 2-2 two -two on the way. Strike three called on the inside corner. And that was certainly the right call. Zach Wheeler has gotten Ellie De La Cruz for the second time today. It's his first backwards K, though. And that was just a picture perfect pitch. That's how they get the first out of the inning, and Spencer Steer is batting next. He's in the seventh spot. He's batting on the right side, of course, and he looks at a sweeper. That was beautiful as well. Money just at the knees at 83 miles per hour. He did strike out in the second inning, infield playing him the pole over towards that left field side. The 0-1 pitch. 
There's a pop-up over towards the first base side and foul ground. JT can't make the catch. He had the he had the mask off and everything and just could not make the catch. I don't think he lost it in the lights. I don't know, but that's maybe he did. I think he should have caught that. Just went out of the heel of the glove. No balls and two strikes now. To be fair, the wind is blowing a lot, but that is going to be called an E2. And I think that's the right call. We will throw it back over to first. It wasn't even near the bag. Phillies have made some really bad mistakes today on the bases and even in the field at times. The 0-2 pitch, fly ball. Actually, it's popped up over towards the third base side. I thought it was a little bit deeper than it was, but Merrifield's in foul ground, and he'll catch it. The second out is recorded, so Spencer Steer is retired. The wind is awful. So Martini, who reached on in there, his last time up, it was on Bryson Stott. He's looking to get on for the second time today. Reds lead it 2 to nothing. We're in the top of the fourth. First pitch was at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And the first pitch is fouled off here. Over towards the right field side. So Stevenson will wait in the on-deck circle. Martini himself, he's 33, was drafted by the Cardinals. In 2011, the 0-1 swing and a miss. Nice sweeper throwing the low and away. No balls, two strikes to Martini. The pitch upstairs. We're just approaching the 9 o'clock hour on the East Coast. This game is about 55 minutes old. One ball, two strikes to Nick Martini. The pitch, swinging a line drive over towards the first base side, and it is a foul ball. Thank goodness, just stayed over towards the right of the line. And we'll do it again. Let's see again. How close this was. It actually hit the ground first. Yep. Hit the ground. In front of the first base side. And then it just rolled foul. Huh. One ball, two strikes. We were get set at the letters. The wind kicking in. And the one-two pitch. Check swing. He looked like he went. And the third base umpire said that he did. Zach Wheeler with another strikeout. That's now the... The third inning where he's had two strikeouts in those innings, and now he has seven on the day. So we go to the bottom of the fourth. Philly's coming up to bat. I'm going to take a very quick step off. Now we'll see you very, very soon. Don't go anywhere. Be right back.
Huh, one more subscriber till we get to 1,880. Hopefully you're all doing well and having yourselves a very, very fantastic Wednesday night. Uh, all right, so up next in the Phillies order, looks like it'll be uh, Harper, Real Muto, and Stott. So the heart and soul of the lineup for the Phillies coming right up. All right, Harper had an infield single his last time up, and the pitch swing and a miss. The splitter was low. And he tried to chase after it. Montas still on the bump. The ball is one strike. And the 0-1 coming up. And it's fouled back over towards the third base side and goes out of play. They're showing... Uh, I don't know what they were showing. It was a uh, part of the scoreboard. I don't know if they were looking at how low the jackpot was right now. It was like at 8,000. I don't know what it was. The 0-2 pitch. There's a roller over towards the second base side. And throw over to first is in plenty of time. And Harper is retired. As he grounds out over to second. So that will bring up JT Realmuto. He struck out in the first. JT lifetime wise against the Reds is a 322 average. 10 homers, 30 RBIs, and 35 runs scored in 47 games against them. The pitch. Low for ball one. He had a three hit game. Or sorry, this was actually a bit ago. He did have a three-hit game against the Reds on April 16th of 2023. The 1-0 pitch, fly ball, hit out towards right field. It's not that deep. Fraley goes trailing over towards the left side, and he'll make the catch over towards the line. Two up, two down in this top of the fourth. He's on actually a really a four-game hitting streak against the Reds. He did not play in last night's game. Garrett Stubbs got the start. And boy, was in that first inning, boy, did he take one right into the private areas. They call it the wickets. But he stayed in the game. Takes a lot of guts to do that. No pun intended. Starts up and he looks at a ball. Now Montas not wasting any time. Base is empty, two outs. And Stott will stare at a cutter this time, just at the knees. They, like, literally had to, like, stop the game for, like, 12 minutes because he was just in a lot of pain. And he stayed in. There's no protection down there. The pitch on the way, low for ball two. It's never comfortable. Two balls, one strike to Bryson Stott. Phillies have two hits on the day. Both of them were infield singles. This time, Stott shows bunt at the 93-mile-per-hour fastball, but he takes it back when it's in there for a strike. I've always, like, wondered, like, what the approach was right there just doing that. Like, you know that you're probably going to not really surprise them. It's crazy. 2-2 on the way, fouled off the glove of Stevenson, and Stott will get a piece of it and stay alive. Phillies lifetime versus the Reds. They've won. Uh, I want to see if this is correct. As we have time called on the mound here. That correct? That's not correct. I don't think that that is correct. It's hard to read this. Never mind. I wanted to read a stat, but it's like so hard to read. Here it is. All right. Two balls, two strikes to Bryson Stott. And the 2-2 on the way. Line drive out to left field, and it'll be caught by the left fielder. Uh, Spencer Steer just on a line. Hard shot. 
but Spencer Steer catches it, and there's another 1-2-3 inning by Frankie Montas. And we go towards the uh, top of the fifth inning. Reds still lead it 2 nothing. Carissa has a lot of enthusiasm. Who's Carissa? Oh, no, spamming in the chat. Thanks so much for taking care of it, man. Thanks so much for taking care of that. So the Reds, the Reds and the Phillies have played each other 2,128 times. And the Reds have won 1,145 of those matches, which means that the Phillies have won 971 of those games. And the Reds' winning percentage record is 541. (laughs) StatMuse is awesome, man. They give you... So much stuff. They really do. How the Phillies doing? Well, look at the score. No runs, two hits. That tells you everything. And they haven't even gotten one out of the infield yet. But thanks for coming on. It was supposed to be a 4.05 start. And it started four hours later at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. It was really supposed to be 1 o'clock. And then Larry's the one that told me after we got off the phone last night that, uh, that the game was supposed to be pushed, that the game was pushed back to four. I didn't check that till this morning. What's up, DFJ? If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icons, and that way you know when I go live. The Guardians, they shut out the Mariners today, eight to nothing. The Padres, they lead it three to two against, the, or they won three to two against the Cardinals. Phillies and the Reds, of course, underway. The Red Sox have, uh, have won one nothing today. Um, and we're able to get the walk-off win. Uh, the Twins, they won 7-3 to three against the Milwaukee Brewers. We were at the plate. Or, sorry, we were on the mound. And Stevenson at the plate. Check swing, did he go? The pitch was outside, and first base umpire Malachi Moore says, yes, he went around. Stevenson did strike out in the third. As he stares at a no one pitch that's outside for ball one. So, yeah, 1,145 wins the Reds have had against the Phillies in 2,128 career games. The next pitch is low and inside for ball two. That's really, really wild. The 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss. Now, one of those games, it was back on August 16th of 2022, Reese Hoskins, he homered twice, and he drove in five runs that day. That was against the Reds, and that was the 10,000th win in Philly's franchise history. The 2-2 pitch, strike three, called on the inside corner. Nice sweeper thrown by Wheeler. Eight Ks on the evening in four and a third of an inning. Just wild. That's the second backwards K that he's had today. And that's the third batter, three out of the last four batters that he has struck out. India comes up and stares at another pitch. That's a sweeper at 83 miles per hour. India just took that one right at the knees. We were with now 69 pitches. He threw 89 in his first out, or first outing. Let's see how many Rob wants him to throw here. The 70th pitch is fouled away. I wasn't expecting that stat. (laughs) I know. It's crazy. No balls, two strikes to Jonathan India. And the 0-2 pitch, strike three, called right down the pipe. Back-to-back, backwards case for Zach Wheeler. He has nine on the day. I mean, nothing really too fancy about that pitch. I think India was anticipating that pitch to have more movement, and it really didn't. It was just right down the middle. Couldn't have thrown it any better. And Will Benson will step up to the box, batting on the left side, then he'll foul the first pitch off. So Wheeler has... Forced two ground outs, three fly outs, and nine strikeouts. 
No balls, one strike. Base is empty, two outs in the top of the fifth. And there's a fastball upstairs. Will Benson is 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out today. So 1-1 one to one to Benson. Swing and a miss. Nice sweeper that was thrown at 84 miles per hour. JJ got stats out the wazoo. That's what happens when you utilize all your resources, man, and you study your stuff. So 1-2 on the way. It's low again. For a ball two, it's a sweeper at 84 miles per hour. There's some kids out towards the left field uh, line. At the bank, the 2-2, check swing, and a line drive caught over at third base by Merrifield. It's like one of the most awkwardest uh, swings that you'll ever see. It just went into the air, and Merrifield didn't even have to play it too hard. But, all right, another 1-2-3 inning for Zach Wheeler, and we head to the bottom of the fifth. Philly's still trying to get on the board. Richard Phillips says, yeah, they had lousy teams in the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and 80s, uh, 50s and 60s, but 70s and 80s were okay. Yep. If you guys are new, if you guys like what we do on here, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the bell icons, and that way you know when I upload. And I also did read a stat the other day that the first time that the Phillies had a home game, it was against the Reds in 2005. That was the first home game that they played in. Now, I could see how or who won that game. I forget who it was off the top of my head. Um, but that was the first home game at the bank. First CVP game. Phillies actually lost a four to one. So the stadium opened on April third of two thousand four. I'm I'm sorry, I stand corrected. So it was two thousand four. And uh, the Phillies hosted their first regular season game on April 12th of the same year. And they lost 4-1 to against the Yankees. Or sorry, against the Reds. Wow. why I'm really screwing up. You didn't listen back then. Yeah, I didn't listen back then. The 40s, 30s, 20s, etc. I do think, I, I remember learning in my sports broadcasting class that the Phillies and the Pirates were like the first game that was ever broadcasted on the radio. And I wonder if that's true. The wind, is that rain too that's coming down? Oh boy. That's great. We're in the bottom of the fifth inning. It's cold out. It looks like it is starting to rain again. So Castellanos do up the former Cincinnati Red. A little swing and miss at that pitch for a strike. Montas still on the bump. 59 pitches. 58 coming into this inning. We're in the bottom of the fifth. Casty Watt in the second. The 0-1 delivery. It's down low. Just below the knees. It was a cutter at 88 miles per hour. The 1-1 one, one pitch, ground ball foul over towards the third base side. Played with the Reds in 2020 and 2021. Had 48 homers combined. He had, in his second year with the Reds, he had 34 homers and 100 RBI and posted a 309 batting average, which was the best year of his career, some would say. The pitch, fouled back towards the screen. We'll do it again. The rain delay messed up. Phillies versus Reds was the first ever night game under the lights. At the bank or just in general? The one-two on the way, fouled again. Castellanos walked his first time up against Frankie Montas, and it was on a pitch that was clearly a strike. 
The Phillies took it. One ball, two strikes to Nick Castellanos. And the next pitch, there's a fly uh, pop-up over towards shortstop. Ellie De La Cruz is under it. And he finally makes the catch. That was hit a mile high. And Casty is retired once again. Mm. That was the first night game in MLB history. Wow. That's crazy. So now Brandon Marsh comes up. Thought about bunting at the first pitch, but decided to take it back on an 88-mile-per-hour cutter. First MLB game on the radio. I want to know what that was. It was Pirates versus the Phillies. That was correct. A 1-0, it's low for ball two. The first baseball game ever broadcasted on the radio. It was a Pirates-Phillies game. It was on August 5th. Of 1921, the Pirates actually beat the Phillies 8-5, to and it was broadcast on KDKA, as the 2-0 is in there for a strike, and Harold Arlen was the play-by-play announcer of that game. Now, Arlen ended up passing away in March of 1986, he was born in, 80, in uh, 1895, that was. As the 2-1, there's a line drive into center field for a base hit, and Marsh finally puts one in the outfield, and the Phillies get their first hit of the inning. That's their third hit of the day. There you go. So Marsh able to get a single. That was a fastball right down the heart and soul of the plate, and he did not miss a beat on it. He had three hits in last night's game and served it out to center. Arlen was 90 when he passed away. Merrifield struck out in the third. Montas on the mound. And Merrifield swings and misses at the first pitch. Yeah, the Phillies were the first radio broadcast, first night game, and would have been the first night game at Wrigley, but it rained out. (laughs) Yo, one way inside. For ball one. So Montas, who spent a lot of his time with the Oakland Athletics, is on the Cincinnati Reds now. 70 pitches in this game. We're in the bottom of the fifth. There's one out. One second left on the pitch clock, and the 1-1 is a splitter that's in the dirt. He was Before he was on the Reds, though, he played with the White Sox, the A's, and, of course, the Yankees. And he's 30 and 35 in his career uh, coming into the season. And at a lifetime ERA of 3.86. One out in the bottom of the fifth. Two balls, one strike to Merrifield. The pitch. Fly ball hit out towards right field. Not that deep. Fraley goes touring towards the line and I'll make the catch. And that'll put two away as Marsh is staying put over at first base. So two outs now. Now coming up is Johan Rojas. So Montas with 72 pitches. Rojas at the plate for the Phillies. It's 2-0 Cincinnati. Third baseman is actually playing in towards close to the grass for Rojas. The pitch is outside and low for ball one. That's because Rojas doesn't really pull a lot of pitches down towards that third base side. One ball, no strikes. Montas gets set at the belt, kicks, delivers, swing and a miss. Fastball came in at 93 miles per hour. Montas tonight has three strikeouts, five or eight flyouts, and two ground outs. Not too, too many Phillies fans out there at what was supposed to be a 4.05 p.m. start time. And first pitch started at 8 p.m. So 1-1 on the way to Roas. 
wide and high for ball two. So Montas, he was uh, signed as a free agent with the Boston Red Sox in 2009, and he received a $75,000 sign-in bonus. And he played with them from 2009 to 2013. As the two on a swung on and missed. And then just before the trade deadline, the Red Sox traded him and a few other players to the White Sox were, and uh, were able to get Jake Peavy. It was a, actually a three-team trade. Jose Iglesias went to the Tigers in that deal. And Avi Garcia uh, was also... Uh, t- uh, he went to the White Sox from the Tigers in that trade. 2-2 on the way. Swing and a miss on a fastball right down Broad Street. And the side is retired once again. So one hit, no, uh, one man left, no runs. And the Phillies have gone blank through five. We go to the sixth inning. Reds still lead it two to nothing thanks to the two-run double by Strand. Hmm. Frankie Montas. First game was August 8th of 88. That's 8-8-88. Wow, that's crazy. Votto should be a Hall of Famer. I don't know, man. Uh, I'd have to look at his like overall career stats. I, I thought that he was a phen- phenomenal first baseman. He was always scary to face. He's now 40 years old. He still is playing with the Blue Jays now. Would have been nice for him to retire a red, but, you know, that's uh, he had a fantastic career. He really did. 356 total homers. Um, was he a, a, se- a six-time All-Star? Won the NL MVP. I don't think he gets in. Um, but I will say this. If Howard gets in, which I don't think Ryan Howard will get in, but if Howard gets in, then Joey Votto should definitely get in. That's the way that I look at it. He'll be there eventually. Yes. Huh, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We are on for every single Phillies, Eagles, and Sixers game. Uh, we try to give you the best play-by-play content. That's what we try to do. Um, so if you're a Phillies freak like the rest of us, make sure you guys like and subscribe to the channel. Zach Wheeler will go out there for his sixth inning of work. You'd expect that this is probably going to be his last inning. He's at 76 pitches. So I don't know how much longer he's really going to last. Encarnacion Strand, who had the two-run double his last time up, is due up at the plate, and he swings and misses at that pitch for a strike. That's the only hit that the Reds have had today. pitch. A ball's one strike again. It's in there for, actually just missed for ball one. I don't think Howard will get in. The pitch. Grounder hit over to shortstop. Gobbled up by Turner. Takes a couple of side shuffle steps over to first and throws it in plenty of time to get Strand for the first out of the sixth inning. Courtesy of Anthony Sanfilippo, Rojas has had 17 plate appearances so far this season, and he still hasn't hit a ball past the infield. And notice how he worded that because he just got his first hit. The pitch to Jemer. Candelario is in there for a strike. I always thought that Jemer was just one of those underrated guys that has just been around um, a lot of different teams. Pitch, swing and a miss. And the count is 0-2. He's 30 years old now. And he signed a $5 million contract with the Reds in 2023. The pitch, that's fouled off. It's really on the Nationals last year. I don't know why it says $5 million in 2023 with the Reds, but... One, two pitch, ground ball backhanded by Turner as he throws on the run to first base in plenty of time. Nice play by Trey, and that'll put two down. 
Just a good play again by Turner. And that was another really nice pitch thrown by Wheeler. Tried to get uh, Jeemer to get some topspin on that pitch. And he did. Not a lot of low pitches that he's throwing. If it's really low pitches, the, a lot of them have been not really in the zone. Fraley sends this one out to right field. Castellanos back on the track, and he'll he can't make the catch over. It hits off the top of the wall. Rojas gets over to it. Fraley can fly, and he'll stay put over at second base with a two-out double. Castellanos was... Uh, it was a hanging, uh, first of all, the pitch itself was a hanging uh, pitch just out over the middle of the plate, and Casti couldn't really get a good read on it, and the ball bounced way in front of him after it, after it ricocheted off the wall. Roas came running him and beat him right to the punch, was able to throw it over the second. So that's the second hit of the day for the Reds. And now it's Ellie De La Cruz's turn. Elliott struck out twice in this game. He's still looking for his first RBI and his first homer of the season. The pitch, swing and a miss. So one ball, one strike. We're in the top of the sixth inning. We were now with 86 pitches. Remember, he threw 89 in his first outing. So you would probably expect that he was not going to go too, too much longer. One ball, one strike to De La Cruz. Batting on the left side, the pitch. Line driving the right field for a base hit. And Fraley's going to easily score. Castellanos gets over to it. And it's an RBI double by Ellie De La Cruz. His first RBI of the season. And it's on an extra base hit. Looked like that, that was a hanging slider. And again, just golfed by De La Cruz. If you throw one and it's a mistake... Ellie will definitely make you pay. Hit the out-of-town scoreboard out in right field. And Wheeler's still in there. Spencer Steer is now due up at the plate, and time is called very quickly. We had a, a bat that was left on the field, and the Reds' bat boy had to go get it, so that must have been De La Cruz's bat. 3 nothing start for the Reds, and we're in the top of the sixth, the pitch. There's a slow roller hit over towards the third base side, and thank goodness it is foul. Ellie has to go back over to second base. So that makes it an 0-1 count. I want to see you and JJ gaming again. It's probably not going to be for a while, my guy. My schedule gets so busy right now. Some wee baseball. <laughs> What's up, Givenut? Oh, he's here? Oh, what's going on, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Appreciate it. No balls. One strike to Spencer Steer. Two outs. The pitch. High. Maybe in the future. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thanks so much for coming on here to show some love, man. Steer's over two today with a strikeout and a flyout. The 1-1 one -one pitch. Fly ball, hit out to left field. It's hooking foul, and it goes out of play. That's what happens. What the heck are those? Federal donuts and chicken. Those donuts look so good. Huh. Runner goes. It's Taylor Cruz, and the pitch is fouled off over towards the right field side, so... De La Cruz has to retreat back over to second base. Gideon says, if our starting pitcher gives up seven, we score nine runs. If our starting pitcher gives up one, like we were, as our offense gets no runs. That's so annoying. Now, there is somebody warming up in the Phillies bullpen. I believe it is Junior Marte. Could be wrong, though. One, two on the way again. Low and inside. Two balls, two strikes. A runner over at second, two outs in the top of the sixth inning. Reds lead it three to nothing. De La Cruz over at second, trying to distract Wheeler. And one second left on the pitch clock, and time is called again. So Wheeler wants to just retreat and reset himself.
two two swing and a miss and Zach Wheeler able to get out of the sixth inning with a strikeout however he does allow bat-to-bat -bat doubles by Jake Fraley and Ellie De La Cruz and the RBI double it gives the Reds a three nothing lead we go into the bottom of the sixth Phillies down three nothing so close to getting 45 likes. We just need two more. Absolutely, man. Thanks so much for coming on. That was an issue at times uh, last year, too. Inconsistent offense. It was. Ugh. And again, if you are just tuning in, my name is Jason Joseph. This, of course, is play-by-play -play with JJ. Thank you all so much for staying on here and for staying up to date with the whole entire game. I know that you all have jobs. I know that you all have lives. But if your life revolves around Phillies baseball like me, Welcome to the channel, because you guys are Phillies freaks. Congratulations. If you're a Phillies freak, subscribe to the channel, because we're on for every single Phillies game, and we're also on for the Sixers and the, and, and, and the Eagles, too. But obviously, with the 162, we really try to, try to give you guys the best that we can. So mind you, that was Zach Wheeler's uh, 22nd time that he has had double-digit strikeouts. thought I saw a stat for that. Our lineup is stat, but too streaky. It is, absolutely. Mm. Hit that sub button. Luke Ar Ar uh, Arcani said uh, that Zach has 10 strikeouts through six innings. The Phillies' defense is not good. The offense ki couldn't hit water if they fell out of a boat. <laughs> Figure it out and help your pitcher, he says. <laughs> well, the Reds got to uh, face uh, their former uh, player, uh, Jesse Winker, in the last series. This time they play against Nick Castellanos. And here's Kyle Schrober comes up, and he tries to tee off as he hits this one out to right field, and it's gone! A line drive laser by Kyle Schwarber. And right on cue, he puts the Phillies on the board. And finally, something going the Phillies' way. Some of the fans that are there are still standing as Schwarber gets high fives. And the fan that just caught that baseball, man, what a souvenir that is. So the Reds get a run in the sixth, in the top of the sixth, that is, and Schwarber gets one back for the Phillies. Turner up at the plate now, the pitch, grounder. It's fouled, though, towards the third base side. That's now the 23rd homer that Schwarber has hit in his career versus the Cincinnati Reds. Just absolutely wild. The 0-1 pitch, swing and a miss. That splitter was not even close to the zone. It was low towards the center of the plate. What's up, Brent? How you doing, my guy? Trey is 0 for 2. He's fouled out, and he's flied out as well. No balls, two strikes to Turner, and he swings and misses at a high, elevated fastball at 94 and goes down swinging. So, good morning. Good afternoon and good night to Trey Turner. Looking at that replay of Schwarber's homer. I think he was playing golf there. That that thing was smoked, and it was not even like it was a power shot. It was just, like you said, a, it was a laser, man. Now Bryce Harper due up. One gone, bases empty, bottom of the sixth, and Harper stares at the splitter just a little bit low. Frankie Montas still on the mound for the Reds. That was his first homer that he has allowed in this game. First run that he's allowed in this game as well. The 1 0 delivery to Bryce. In there for a strike at 88 miles per hour. One ball, one strike. And the pitch to Harper. There's a little tapper back over towards the mound. Montas has it and throws over to first. And there's two outs. And I have yet to see Bryce Harper. Actually, I did get to see him get an infield single. But I have yet to see him hit one out towards the outfield. <laughs> so 
So there's two away. Two outs now in the bottom of the sixth, and Real Muto is up to bat for Philadelphia. He looks at a splitter at 84 miles per hour. No balls, one strike, two gone in the bottom of the sixth inning. Sounds good, man. Thanks so much for coming on here. Montas kicks, delivers, and he throws it way inside for a ball. One ball, one strike to JT. The pitch grounded foul towards the third base side. Montas has only faced the Phillies once, and that was on April 8th of 2022 when he was on the A's. Ended up giving up five runs in that game on six hits and one walk in five innings. And he did get the loss in that game. Phillies ended up winning that game 9-5 to five against the A's. The 1-2, inside and high for ball two. Of course, Jim, appreciate you so much for coming on here. Means a lot, man. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, space is empty. Philly's down by two in the bottom of the sixth inning. The pitch, line drive out to right center field. It'll split the gap and go all the way towards the wall for a base hit. JT is over at first, and he's just going to get a single. I had to give a... Benson credit for getting over to that as it just almost got past him. It was over towards the warning track as it bounced right in front of him. And JT just couldn't go over to second. That's how you get an opposite field single, though, with two outs. The second hit of the inning by the Philadelphia Phillies. Now it's Bryson Stott's turn to bat. Spike that like button. Riamuto's over at first, and Stott's at the plate. 89 pitches for Montas. And Montas will take a very, very quick step off. As he calls for time. Infield playing Stott to pull over towards the second base, uh, over towards the 4 3 hole. Pitch to Stott, swing and a miss. That splitter is not even close. It's down low, and it's a good pitch by Montas, but I thought maybe Stott would take that, but he didn't. The 0 1. That time he takes the splitter. It was not as high as the previous one. It was even lower. Stott this year against righties is 3 for 10 with a double and two walks. One ball, one strike to Stott. And the pitch swing and a miss. And Stott goes down on on the left side of the batter's box, and has to take a very quick step out. Pitch was laying inside, and he still swung at it anyways. I think he landed on that right, on that left knee. Look at it again on the replay. Actually, he fouled it off of his right knee. His his uh, left knee, of course, hit the, hit the dirt, but oof. I thought he missed it. I couldn't even tell. One ball, two strikes, two outs in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch, it's up high, and it bounces off the glove of Stevenson. But, man, he did a good job at keeping it in front of him. And, therefore, JT had to just stay put at first. That was a, honestly, that's a clutch play because the pitch was way up high. And Stevenson it had it deflect off his glove. He played it on a bounce, got up, and then just barehanded it. So it's a 2-2 count. Two outs in the bottom of the sixth inning. Philly's down by two. It's 3-1 to one against the Reds. Runner goes. The 2-2 pitch down low for ball three. And that'll put a runner, I believe, over at second. It looked like the runner from first was going. Did he really go, though? I guess not. So Castellanos waits in the on-deck circle. It's three balls, two strikes. So, yeah, JT stayed over at first. It looked like he was going. But it's hard to tell sometimes with the angle on the monitor. Third base side is wide open. Three balls, two strikes to start. Big pitch coming up. Here it is. Outside for ball four. And that puts runners over at first and second. 
And already 95 pitches for Montas. And right here, Derek Johnson, the pitching coach for the Reds, is going to have a conversation. Justin Wilson now is warming up in the bullpen for Cincinnati. The 32-year-old has played for the Mets, the Tigers, and more teams. They're starting to kind of loosen him up. Big at bat here for Nick Castellanos. As we have a timeout on the mound, everybody comes in for this conference on the infield, and Chat Whitson will go out there to break up the conversation. Phillies will play next on Friday. They head to Washington, D.C. The weather, apparently I heard, and this is, it's of course, like not official yet, but I heard that it's uh, not supposed to be nice out there either. So the tying run's over at first, and the go-ahead run is up at the plates. And Casty steps into the box. Big matchup here. Montas looks back at second to keep Real Muto in check. The first pitch. Check swing. The pitch was inside. Did he go? No, he did not. Sometimes you get a little bit afraid with his long swing that he has. It was definitely a check swing, but he did not go. He just barely held his horses. Casty's 0 for 1. He walked in the second. The 1 0 delivery. Swing and a grounder, but it's fouled towards the third base side. One ball and one strike. To Castellanos, the next pitch, it's low and inside for ball two. He is at 224 against the Reds throughout his career in 31 games. So not a high batting average for him against Cincinnati. Six homers and 15 RBI against them. The 2-1 to Castellanos, inside again for ball two, or for ball three, that is. So that'll make it a 3-1 count. Three balls, one strike. And the pitch to Castellanos way inside, and that's going to load the bases. Back-to-back -back walks allowed by Montas. That's the second time that Castellanos has walked against him in his career, and David Bell has seen enough. So we're going to have a pitching change and a call to the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds as the Phillies fans have some life to them. With the bases loaded and Brandon Marsh is coming on up to the plates. So pitch and change, bases loaded. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Philly's still down 3-1 to one to the Cincinnati Reds. Montas ends the day with 100 pitches. And the runners on every single base are his still responsibility. Are still his responsibility. Huh. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on the bell icons and that way you know when I upload. We just hit 1,880. I appreciate it. We got 73 people on here. Tell your friends, you Phillies, uh, you Phillies freaks. Come on, man. Hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. And if you're not a Phillies freak, if you're a baseball freak, we want you on here too because we call Phillies, Sixers, and Eagles games, but we are really invested with all those sports. We, we also will be doing a little bit of hockey in the playoffs if the Flyers do make it. I just didn't really have time to do them this year. But this is the guy that we want up. Don't pinch hit, Rob. Well, Wilson's coming out there. They want to have a lefty on lefty for sure. But I agree with you. I, I think that we have to leave Marsh in there. Phillies have had five hits. They've only scored one run thanks to the solo homer by Schwarber to lead off this inning that they're currently in. If you are tuning in for the first time, okay, if you're a Reds fan, I want you to answer this for me. Or if you're a Phillies fan and if you're just on here for the first time or just a baseball fan, what got you into your favorite team? Okay? What got you into Reds baseball? What got you into Phillies baseball? And I want to know a little bit more about you. So comment down below. Ugh, this at bat is giving me stress here. Phillies have had two errors today. 
Bases are loaded and on the bump for coming on in relief for Montas will be Justin Wilson. Marsh is up. Steps into the box the first pitch. It's on the outside corner for a strike. Just at 94 miles per hour, right at the knees. So JT's at third, Stotts at second, Casty's over at first. It's 3-1 to one Cincinnati. We're in the bottom of the six bases loaded. Two outs for the Phillies. The 0-1 coming. Here it is. It's outside and wide. And the count is now 1-1. One and one. So Wilson is a 33-24 and 24 lifetime in his career. It's his 13th season. He has a 3.40 a career ERA. The 1-1 one, one to Marsh. It's popped up over towards the third base side. And Jimmer Candelario gets under it and he'll squeeze the catch. And the inning comes to an end in foul ground. The Phillies do get one run on a solo homer by Kyle Schwarber. However, they do leave the bases loaded. And we head to the top of the seventh inning. Phillies down 3-1 to one against the Reds. As a Reds fan, seeing Jay Bruce walk off uh, at home plate to win the Central and watching Ken Griffey Jr. was absolutely electric. Now, that's really cool. I like that. Uh, what else do we have? Free Marsh. Another Marsh home run. Yep, that didn't happen. Uh, Roy Halladay is what got me into baseball. I like Roy Halladay. I like, I like Doc Halladay a lot. Great player. Brent says four for four, born. And raised here, wouldn't want it any other way, despite the suffering. <laughs> Roy got me into baseball. Yep, I read that. I'm, I'm with you, Brent. I I, I like uh, I like our teams, man. If you are new, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icons, and that way you know when I upload. As a Reds fan, seeing Jay Bruce walk off at home plate, uh, at home to win the Central, and watching Ken Griffey was absolutely electric. Uh, were you an Adam Dunn fan, too? Because I remember when he hit a home run that literally hit the bat drop when he was on the Reds, and he always scared me. Like, him and Howard were just those first basemen that were just so, like, strong, and they were baseball players. You know, we were talking the other day in the Sixers chat about, like, that the Sixers needed some basketball players, you know, guys that could just ball, guys that could just hoop and just take one to the rim and not these, like, football types of players who are just afraid to play, who are just afraid to finish in traffic or just afraid to go up with a shot. Like, you need hoopers. And Dunn and Howard and even Fielder, all those guys were just true baseball players, in my opinion. Even Kyle Schwarber to this day, too. Junior's the best player I ever saw. Junior Marte is on the mound for the Fightins. Last season, he pitched in 40 games, was 2-4 for four in save opportunities, and posted a 5.83 ERA. So far, so good, though, this season. We're in the top of the seventh inning. There's about five people in the camera right behind home plate. That's how, that's how many people are there. There's maybe a little bit more. Yeah, I see a little bit more. Okay. Nick Martini is up, and he stares at a ball that misses. Nick got on with an air by Bryson Stott. The 1 0 pitch slider at 83 miles per hour. Man, this wind is just. Mother Nature is not doing its part in this game. The pitch. Well, it's a little bit outside, but it's a called strike at 95 miles per hour. Scott says that he is a hometime, a hometown Reds fan. His first game was in 77 at Riverfront when he was three years old. Now, that's really cool. The one-two pitch. Grounder hit back up the middle. Turner has it, though. Flips it over to first, and it's in time. Nice play by Trey Turner. There's one out to start off the top of the seventh inning. The defense played him just right, and Bobby Dickerson, the Phillies defensive uh, coach, did a good job at aligning them over towards that middle of the infield, so the scouting uh Scouting report was correct there. 93 was the most fun I ever had as a fan. John David Walker says the big red machine is what got me into Reds baseball. The pitch. It's inside for ball one. 
So Marte is facing the second batter. Zach Wheeler, his day was done. He had 10 strikeouts in six innings and allowed three runs. The 1 0 to Stevenson. It's down low and a little bit outside for ball two. Now, David says that he was a Mets fan when he was young, and he went to his first Phillies game, which was Mike Schmidt's retirement. Wow, that's a memorable one. The pitch fouled back towards the screen. And then going back to Adam Dunn, uh, Ghost Guy says, yeah, Prime Dunn was a freak. Not sure if that was in the juice era, though. Adam Dunn was a powerful man. He is kind of like, Kyle Schorber is like Adam Dunn. The 2-1 pitch grounder. Rolled over towards third base. Merrifield has it. Flips it over to first, and it's in plenty of time to get Stevenson out. Two up, two down in this top of the seventh inning. Junior Marte with eight pitches, and both outs have been recorded on grounders. John says that he grew up loving Nolan Express, too, though. Jonathan India, who takes a high strike, there's a slider at 83 on the inside part of the plates. I like Marte in this situation. I'm okay with it. I don't think it's bad. He's been pitching pretty well. The ball is one strike to Jonathan India. The pitch fouled back towards the screen. We'll do it again. Snooter, what's going on, man? Thanks so much for coming on here, as always. We got 68 people on here watching. Make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the bell icons, and that way you know when I go live for a Phillies, Sixers, or Eagles game. The ball is two strikes to India. The pitch, strike three, called on the upper third of the zone, and India stared right at it, and he goes down looking. A one, two, three, seventh inning, and we go to the bottom of the seventh. It's time to stretch at the bank. Merrifield, Rojas, and Schwarber. Coming up for the Fightins. Okay. Uh, so India struck out looking. Now we're approaching the 10 o'clock hour. Okay. I want to see our best relievers in a Wheeler game. Well, honestly, Marte's been pitching pretty good this year. So I, I, I'm not opposed to it. Now, if he were to give up like a, bit, a base hit or something, then I'd be a little bit more worried. But I'm okay. In that situation, I'm okay with it. But that's just me. Junior Marte. All right, so, all right, we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. So I'm going to ask you, where is my book? There it is. I'm going to ask you a Phillies trivia question, okay? Um, And if you get the answer correct, you'll hear the following. If you get the answer incorrect, you'll hear... The following. Okay, so we're going to do a Phillies trivia question. And this is what it's going to be. Actually, you know what? We'll, we're not even going to pull it from this book. We're going to do it from right here because I saw something that was interesting and I wanted to make sure that I screenshot it. Okay. Um, Where is it? I have it. It's right here. Is this it? Uh, I'm finding it right now. Nope. Okay. All right, so we'll do this one. I guess it's not here. I thought I took a picture of it. I thought I took a picture of it. All right, so Whit Merrifield's up at the plate, and he stares at a slider that just barely misses the zone for ball one. thought I'd have it, but I guess I didn't take a screenshot of it. Oh, yeah. So, one ball, no strikes, and it's in there for, for a strike. All right, so John Clark tweeted out last night that Bryce Harper became the third Philly with three homers in a game including a grand slam. Which other two players for the Phillies did that? Other two players, which uh, which of them also had three homers in a game for the Phillies? Two balls, one strike to Whit Merrifield. Sims now on the bump. 
The pitch. There's a pop-up out towards shallow right field. Fraley calls off Encarnacion Strand, and he makes the catch with the glove just in front of his cap, and there's one gone. It's starting to rain again. So there's one away, and Merrifield pops out. All right, so let's see. Lucas Sims pitching for the Reds. Orioles fan, but this is the last leg of a parlay for me, so suddenly a new Philly homer tonight. Schmidt and Howard. Mm. Incorrect. Brad Miller and Jason Worth. One of them is correct. I should have said including a grand slam. You are right that they had three homers, yes, in the game, but one of them had to be a grand slam, and that's on me. So Worth did hit a grand slam and have himself a three-homer game, but who was the other one that had a grand slam and a three-homer game? One ball, one strike to Alec Bohm, who steps in for Johan Rojas. The pitch is low for ball two. Worth and somebody. Sorry, that took me a little bit longer to find. Two balls, one strike to Alec Bohm. The pitch by Sims, it's fouled back towards the screen. So Harper became one of three Philly players last night to hit three homers, including a grand slam. Jason Worth was one of those guys, but who was the other Philly to do that, to have a grand slam and three and and to have a grand slam as one of his homers in a three homer game. The pitch is low for ball two, so it's two balls, two strikes to Alec Bohm. It's not that no, it's not that hard. Two balls, two strikes, one out in the bottom of the seventh inning. Sims with the pitch, strike three, called on the outside corner at 94 miles per hour. Chip Tomei says the dad. <coughs> Steve Jeltz. <coughs> nope. So the other guy to have a grand slam as one of his homers during his three-homer game is not Darren Dalton. <coughs> it was Dick Allen. Dick Allen was... The other player that had three homers in the game, inclu- including a grand slam. So that is your trivia question of the day. So Bryce Harper last night became only the third Philly with three homers in a game, including one as a grand slam. And Jason Worth and Dick Allen were the only other Phillies players to do that. No balls, one strike to Kyle Schwarber, who's up at the plate. There's two outs, nobody on the pitch. It's low and inside for ball one. It's getting really cold at the bank. Lots of sweaters, and the rain is still coming down there. The pitch to Schwarber, low again for ball two. Literally commented Dick Allen. Well, I probably missed it, so I apologize. I didn't even see it. He didn't comment Dick Allen. Did you say Dick Allen was one of them? Sorry, I have a lot of things to read on here. The pitch. Way up high for ball three. When he was on the Phillies, he was Richie Allen. Yes. It's true. The 3-1 pitch, low and inside for ball four. I didn't see your comment, dude. It didn't come up on here. Didn't even comment on here. So Kyle gets on with a walk. Winds are gusting at 17 miles per hour. Just absolutely wild. Tying runs up. It's Trey Turner. So Schwarber's aboard with a two-out walk. Turner's up. Sims still on the mound for the Reds in this inning. The pitch to Turner. Chopped foul towards the third base side. And there is Dusty Wathen, who plays... The ball and gives a little souvenir to a fan. Turner's 0 for 3. He's fouled out. He's flied out and he has struck out today. Schwarber leads off over at first. The 17th pitch is outside and low. 
That misses pretty badly for ball one. So again, Bohm just came in to pinch hit for Johan Rojas, and he struck out looking. Before that, Whit Merrifield popped out to right. Schwarber got on with a walk. The pitch, low again for ball two. Malachi Flynn just dropped a 50-point game off the bench. Wow. The 2-1 fouled away. So Flynn, according to NBA on ESPN, even though that the that the that the, that the Pistons lost, Flynn just dropped the third 50-point game off the bench since 70-71. 1970 to the 71 season. The 2-2 two -two on the way, strike, three called, and Turner gets caught looking at a slider right down the middle of the plate at the knees. No runs, one man left. We go to the top of the eighth. Cincinnati leads it 3-1. to one. So They're looking to take the series tonight. The third 50-point game off the bench. He had 50 points, six rebounds, five assists, and four steals, Malachi Flynn. That's crazy. In case you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the notification bell icon, and that way you know when I go live. The name is Jason Joseph. This, of course, is Play by Play with JJ. We're on for the Phillies, the Sixers, and the Eagles. If you're a Phillies freak like me, hit that subscribe button. If you're a baseball freak like me, hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. If you like sports, hit that like and subscribe button. We're going to look at the out-of-town scoreboards right now. So just bear with me for a quick, quick second. So what we'll do is we'll look at the MLB first. So for Major League Baseball, Reds lead it 3-1 to one as we go to the top of the eighth inning. The Cubs lead it 8-3 to three, uh, against the Colorado Rockies. In the top of the seventh, the Astros have a 4 nothing lead. They're looking for their second win of the season. They're 1-5, and five, and they're taking on the Blue Jays. That's going to the sixth, and those are all the games that are on currently. The Giants play the Dodgers tonight at 10-10 p.m. Eastern time, so in just about eight minutes. The other games are final. Orioles won 4-3 against the Royals. The Angels beat the Marlins, who are now 0-7. They just fired, a, or Kim Ying just uh, left the organization today. She was the GM of the Miami Marlins. So Bohm slides over to third base for the Phillies, and Marsh now goes into center field, and Merrifield goes over to left. So Merrifield slides over to left. Marsh goes over, or sorry, yeah, Marsh goes over from left to center. Roas day is done, and here's Gregory Soto who comes in, throws the first pitch on the outside corner. He had a 3-4 and four record last year. A 4.62 earned run average, and batters were hitting 210 against him. Pitch to Fraley. Just misses, barely outside. So again, Merrifield goes over to third. Sorry, Bohm goes over to third. Merrifield goes to the left, and in center now, it's Marsh. The 1-1 one -one pitch on the way. It's fouled off the right foot of Benson, actually. So Benson's up at the plate. I stand corrected. That's got to hurt. Yikes. Merrifield. Who was I just saying? Merrifield Bohm. And then Marsh. Okay. One ball, two strikes. Soto again gets set. Ten seconds left. On the pitch clock again. The 1 2 delivery, way inside and high for ball two. Welcome to the team, Jason. What's up, Jason? Got you, man. JJ, have you ever been to a Phillies game? If so, what games? I've been to a lot of games, man. Um, I mean, not like too, too many, but I've been to some really, really good ones. Two balls, two strikes. Soto on the bump, facing Will Benson here. The 2-2 two -two on the way, swing and a miss. A high fastball that Benson could not catch up to at 97 miles per hour. 
Good job by Rob to have him come in in this situation. So that's back-to-back -back strikeouts for the Phillies' bullpen. And that's how we start off the eighth with the first out, though. So India struck out looking to end the seventh. Phillies' pitching has retired now five batters in a row. First pitch to Encarnacion Strand with the two-run double off of Wheeler. It's in there for a strike. The ball is one strike. The pitch swing and a miss on a 97-mile-per-hour heater. Right on the upper third of the zone. What game are you commenting on? Uh, commenting on the Phillies game. We do Phillies, Sixers, and Eagles. No balls, two strikes, and the 0-2 up high for a ball. I can't believe that Malachi Flynn had 50 points, and he's the third player to do that off the bench. That's crazy. The 1-2 on the way, swing and a miss. That fastball was right down Broad Street, and Encarnacion Strand goes down swinging. Crazy. Snooter says, I'm still pretty young, but I went to the NLDS game three in 2022 and, and one other game in Cleveland last year. Now, that's really cool. Candelario comes up. He's batting on the right side. The switch hitter will take the first one elevated and high and outside. If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Turn on the bell icons, man. We need 15 more subscribers, 16 now to get to 1,900. The pitch, swing and a miss. The slider came in at 87 miles per hour. If you guys want to donate to the channel too, please feel free to do so. Just, uh, you, you know, you can give a super chat down below if you would like to. You know, we're on here almost every day. We call Phillies baseball, Sixers basketball, and Eagles football. We put in a lot of time. The trainer is going to go out there to just check up on Candelario. It looked like maybe he, uh, I don't know if he tweaked something or not on the swing. Let's see here. There's nothing really too unordinary about it. Maybe he had a little cramp. I don't know. I don't want to speculate. But the athletic trainer's name is Sean McQueenie. And him and David Bell are going to go back to the dugout. So one one delivery. Line drive down the right field line. It's a fair ball. Castellanos has to chase it all the way towards the corner. And there is getting into second base safely is Candelario. He's able to get a double, and he is he is not 100% at all. Uh, he is hanging on to both of those knees, and I I wonder if he's going to come out of the game. He d does not look comfy. Stands over at second. He's just grimacing a little bit. I want to see if there was uh, anything to that, but it was a nice shot anyways over towards the right field side. Huh. So an opposite field double, two outs in the top of the eighth inning, and up to bat now is a pinch hitter. It'll be Stuart Fairchild. The pitch is just outside for a ball. They're showing a replay of when Candelario was shaking off his hand when he was in the field. It was his bare hand, so that was his right hand. And going back to that, the 0-1. In there for a strike at the knees. You have the trainer's name at your fingertips. I made sure I wrote it down because, you know, I, I realized that I got to write those things down. They have them uh, on their website, but you got to look for it. No balls, two strikes, two outs in the top of the eighth inning. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock. And the throw to home plate. Swing and a miss. So Soto strikes out the side after allowing a two-out double, though to Candelario, who gets out of the inning. So, no runs, one hit, one man left, and we go to the bottom of the eighth. Phillies down to their final six outs. See the Rangers versus the Devils fight? No, I did not. Um, we didn't finish going over the scores, by the way. The Yankees, they won 6-5 to five in the 11th inning, by the way. Um, Guardians won 8 nothing, and they shut out the Mariners. Red Sox shut out the A's 1 to nothing, and the Padres... Beat the uh, Cardinals 3-2. to two. The Pirates lost today. They are now 5-1 and one on the season. 
And the Nationals got their second win. They're now two and three. If you just subscribe to my channel, comment who you are down below. I would really appreciate that for sure. Thanks for the wrench. Got you. Absolutely, man. It was nuts. Wow. That's crazy. Huh. 13 more subs till we get to 1,900. And again, if you would like to uh, donate to the stream, if you'd like to donate to the cause, if you're a Phillies freak like me, or if you're a Sixos or a Sixer, I almost said Sicko Sixer, but I can't use that because that's a DJ's term. He has Sixer Sickos. If you're an Eagles fanatic, if you're any of those, please make sure that you subscribe to our channel. We were watching it live. There's some bad blood. Love Taylor Swift, by the way. If you are on here and if you like Taylor Swift, comment down below. Or hit that thumbs up button. Hit that subscribe button. We love Taylor Swift. We give her nothing but praise. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. But I, I really do like Taylor a lot. Love this live, JJ. Thanks, man. Bird's Booster. Bird's Booster! <laughs> Instead of a rooster, it's a it's a it's a bird's rooster. <laughs> Swift is okay. Huh. Okay. Um, I'm looking at the scores. The Magic lead it by thirteen points in the NBA. That does not help the Sixers. The Sixers, I don't think they're gonna be able to catch up to them. The Celtics, they did beat the Thunder one thirty five one hundred. The Pacers lost today. Let's go, baby. That's great for the Sixers. That's awesome. They lost to the Nets. Here's Bryce Harper up at the plate. The first pitch. Line drive foul. Harper decided not to go with the batting gloves. So it was over towards the right field side. So that means now that the Sixers are just two games behind the Indiana Pacers in the standings. The 0-1 to Harper. Swing and a miss. Oh, man. He missed badly at that. So the count is 0-2. Philly's pitching with 42 strikeouts in this series. That's insane. The ball's two strikes to Harper. Cruz on the bump and the 0-2 pitch. It's tapped over towards the third base side, gobbled up by Candelario. Throw over to first in plenty of time, and Harper is down. And will go back towards the towards the uh, towards the dugout. Mm. <clears throat> time to score some runs, says Larry. I agree with that. So Bryce starts off with a ground out over to third, and JT is due up next in the order. Mm. We're at 874 total views. That's great. So JT is coming up to bat. One out, base is empty, bottom of the eighth, and he looks at a cutter that misses outside and low for ball one. So Cruz, who's on the mound, will get you his stats in just a few moments. JT did single in the sixth. The 1 0 delivery at the knees for a strike. JT decided to take that one all the way. One ball, one strike to Real Muto, and the pitch swing going to miss. That pitch was in the dirt. And it's a one-two count. So Fernando Cruz has pitched in two games this season. So far as a 3.86 ERA. Last year was his first full season that he played with the Reds. He played in 58 games, was 1-2 and two with a 4.91 ERA. One ball, two strikes to J.T. Real Muto. The pitch, swing and a miss. And it almost got away from catcher but the throw over to first is in time so it was a drop strike three but the throw to first was made and there's two outs so JT strikes out Phillies down to their last out in this eighth inning final out of the eighth so they're still have four outs to play with Shet 42 it is correct Remember, they played an extra innings, too, in the first game. Stott comes up, and he shoots this one out to left center field. It'll be caught, though, by Steer, and it was hit sharply. Close, but no cigar, and the side is retired. A 1-2-3 inning. 
for Fernando Cruz. And we go to the top of the ninth. Phillies down 3-1. to one. Reds coming back up to bat. Boy, okay. Um, all right, who's going to be on tomorrow night when we call Sixers basketball? Comment down below. If you are going to be on here tomorrow night when we call the Sixers game, let us know down below. I swear, this team is never ready for the regular season, but this team is so addicting to watch. You know, it's like every game. Look at how many viewers we have. We have 65 people on here. This team is must-watch TV. Any way you look at it. Um, it doesn't matter what time of the year. With this team that they have, Bryce Harper, you can't miss an at-bat. You, you really can't because he's just that special, and he means that much to this city. But they're, it's, it's nice to have competitive basketball. Now, I'll tell you this. The Bucks are down 111 to 101. Wow. That's crazy. Bucks may honestly... Lose that second seed and drop to the third. And looking over at the NHL scores, we got to keep our eyes on a couple of games there for the Flyers' sake. Uh, which games do we have tonight? I'm looking at the standings. So right now the Flyers are a point above the Capitals, two points above the Islanders, and they're also a point above the Detroit Red Wings. So none of those teams play tonight. Huh. Okay. The Devils did lose. The Devils are another team that you kind of have to watch out for as a dark horse. And the Penguins, did they play today? No. Sooner it's true. They don't look prepared again. I know. We're in the top of the ninth inning. Reds coming up to bat. So... Fernando Cruz, who pitched in the bottom of the eighth inning. The other Cruz is coming up. It's Ellie De La Cruz, and now Nick Nelson will be out there to pitch the ninth. I'm sure Larry's not happy about that. De La Cruz up at the plate in the first pitch by Nelson. That's in there for a strike. Now, I don't know why in this situation you would put in Nick Nelson, and I'd be curious to ask Rob about that. De La Cruz had an RBI double. Then he takes that one inside for ball one. One ball, one strike to Ellie De La Cruz, batting on the left side. Phillies only put up one run, and that was in the bottom of the sixth on a solo shot by Kyle Schwarber. The 1-1 one, one on the way. Grounder hit over towards the first base side. Knocked down by Harper. The throw over to first is in time. Got him. The old Nelson hustled over towards first base. And just beat out a lightning quick Ellie De La Cruz. Nice play by Harper. And there's a 3-1 ground out. <laughs> Told you it wasn't going to be happy. Am I supposed to know who Nick Nelson is? <laughs> well, that expression should say it all. So Nelson actually won the battle there and beat out Ellie De La Cruz by less than a quarter of a step. First pitch to Spencer Steer is a sinker at 92 miles per hour. I mean, that was really close. You know what I mean? That's crazy. No balls, one strike. The pitch, low and away. Eric, not Eric Kratz, Eric Katz. What's up, Eric? I'm glad that I found this channel because I can only see highlights from the games. That's what we do, man. We're on here for the Sixers, the Phillies, and the Eagles. The 1-1 one -one delivery, swing and a miss, change up at 86. It was low. And Nick Nelson was six pitches so far in this ninth inning. As a 1-2 count, Alexis Diaz, who pitched in the first game of this series, is warming up in the bullpen. He's the closer for the Reds. 1-2 on the way. There's a fly ball hit out to right field. Castellanos goes back towards the track, and it hits off the top of the wall. Castellanos also bobbled it, and the throw over to second base will be cut off by Stott. Stott's going to throw over to third, and it's a triple, an opposite field triple by Spencer Steer, and they put a runner at third. Man, that thing just took a wind over towards the right side. I didn't even think Castellanos played it perfectly. It actually bounced right in front. It was on the track, 
and then it bounced off the top of the wall, and Castellanos couldn't make the basket play when, as soon as it bounced, and it took a couple of more bounces. Then he finally got to it, so I, I'm not sure that if Steer would have been would have been at third even if he would have made that play or not. We have a pinch runner coming in for the Reds. Get you a name in just a few moments. Martini now due up at the plate. One out. Runner at third. And the changeup is thrown way up high for a ball. Martini is 0 for 3. Nick Nelson. (laughs) The pitch. Line drive back up the middle for a base hit. And one run's going to come in to score. It's an RBI single. It was Thompson that came in to pinch run for Steer, and he scores. And it's a 4-1 to one game on the RBI single delivered by Martini. So that makes it 4-1 to one in the top of the ninth. Yeah, I can't really understand going to uh, Nelson in this situation either, to be honest with you. It makes no sense. Here comes Stuart Fairchild, and he stares at a slider that's on the outside corner for a strike. There's one out in the top of the ninth. Reds just got an insurance run for now. Five seconds left on the pitch clock. Stevenson batting on the right side. The 0-1 delivery. Sinker that misses. It's a 1-1. One and one. Stevenson's 0 for 3. The pitch low and barely inside for ball 2. Two balls, one strike. One out in the top of the ninth. The next pitch. Check swing. Did he go? First base umpire says, yes, he did. I mean, I'll never forget the game, and and I don't like always bringing this up. It was a couple of years ago in 2022 when Joe Girardi was still managing and Bryce Harper hit a home run off of Kenley Jansen in the top of the ninth inning, gave the Phillies the lead, and they were up to go into the bottom of the ninth, and Joe Girardi put in Nick Nelson and Odupo Herrera, who was out in center field, Dropped a fly ball. It was a routine fly ball. And that was the walk-off hit. Three balls, two strikes, as that pitch just barely misses. India waits in the on-deck circle. Infield playing him the pull over towards the left field side. Stevenson, that is. The 3-2 on the way, swinging the miss. And a throw over the second for two. Got him! A strikeout. Throw him out. Double play. And that's going to end the ninth inning. The Reds looking to challenge this. Let's see if they do. The pitch was outside and low. JT just was able to throw a cannon over to second base. And I don't know if they're going to challenge this. I think that they, I don't know. They won't. Okay, so we go to the bottom of the ninth. A strike him out, throw him out, double play. And the Phillies down to their final three runs. Larry says, I remember that. Can't believe Alvarado's not in there, says JDW. John David Walker. That was nice. Now watch us score two runs in the ninth and lose. I know. Yep. All right. So it's Castellanos. Then it's Marsh. And then it's Merrifield. Correct? If you are new to the channel, make sure you guys like and subscribe and turn on the bell icons. And that way you know when I upload. What's up, Jamie? Jamie. We need 13 more subscribers to get us to 1,900. Let's try to get there. What's up, Flame? Of course, I remember you. You're a moderator on here, so of course I remember you. I'm over here with bated breath, says John David Walker. (laughs) I want to make sure I get that strike him out, throw him out, double play. That was a pretty good... That was a pretty good highlight call. Larry says, I'm disgusted. The offense is not scoring. That's the number one problem. 
The management of the bullpen is just added frustration. But this this team needs to score. Can we put Rob on the hot seat? Yeah, I'm not there, dude. I'm not there. I'm not happy with him. But I'm not there yet. Not. <sighs> but it is frustrating watching this team not score runs. All right, we go to the bottom of the ninth. It'll be six, seven, and eight due up for the Vitans. And they'll have to face Alexis Diaz. Remember, Frankie Montas got the start today. Pitched pretty well. Get you his stats in just a few seconds, but... Um, yeah, so it's, uh, Schwarber scored the only run today. The Phillies have three hits. The one to four hitters today are just four, or sorry, three for, three for 15 with just a solo homer. That's it. Angels had a good game. Every day I'm getting closer. No worries, though. Al, it's weird that Alvarado wasn't in. I, I do agree with that. I, I I wouldn't have put in Alvarado maybe in that situation, but I would have went with uh, Dominguez. You know what I mean? So Diaz is now coming up to pitch for the Reds. Alexis Diaz, the 27-year-old from Fumaco, Puerto Rico. He's 6'2", weighs 224 pounds. And so far this season, he pitched actually, uh, he pitched on April 1st and threw one and two-thirds of an inning against the Phillies. Was able to get two strikeouts on 14 pitches, but the outing before that, he allowed three earned runs to the Nationals as they lost 7-6. to six. Here's Castellanos on the first pitch, and he takes it outside for ball one. Diaz last year was 9-6. and six. He had 37 saves and 40 opportunities. 86 strikeouts in 67 and a third of an inning. The 1 0. It was in the strike zone, but again, the umpire says it was high. <laughs> I guess that's part of the Castellanos curse now. Like the broadcaster's jinx and everything. That, that, that's I think that that's a, a part of it now. To be fair, though, the next pitch is called a strike. That was clearly outside, but. Chad Whitson, I think, just made up for it because he he just looked at Castellanos and just said strike. The 2-1 on the way, swing and a miss on the outside corner at 93. Nick Lifetime against Diaz is 0-2 with a walk and a strikeout in his career. Two balls, two strikes. Casti has walked today twice. And it's popped out over the third as well. The 2-2, swing and a miss, and Castellanos strikes out on a slider. That was way outside. One down in the bottom of the ninth. Well, the difference of this game, of course, was the Encarnacion Strand two-run double that he hit in the third inning. Then there's Ellie De La Cruz's RBI double that he got off of Wheeler in the sixth. Marsh is due up, and he swings, takes a hack at a slider that misses, and he's behind in the count so far. The only hit that he's had against Diaz, or sorry, the only at-bat that he had against Diaz was an RBI single. He shoots that one out towards the right field side, but it is fouled off. Five for 28 with four walks and nine strikeouts in this series. Oh, no, uh, tonight. The 0-2, another foul ball over towards the left field side. No balls, two strikes to Brandon Marsh, who did single back in the fifth. That's the only hit that he's had today. The 0-2 strike, three called on the upper third of the zone at 93 miles per hour. Apparently, Jake Cave, who's on the Rockies now, just hit a two-run double off of Hector Neris at Wrigley Field. <laughs> Talk about two former Phillies players going at it. Merrifield up at the plate. All is up to him. 
And he takes a fastball wide for a 1-0 count. One ball, no strikes, two gone. And the next one is also wide, almost in the same exact spot. Whip batting 077 so far on the season. The 2 0 on the upper third of the zone for a called strike. And it's a 2 1 count now. <laughs> That is funny. The pitch. Swing and a grounder. Rolled over towards the third base side. It is a foul ball. Barely. Phillies will be back in action again on Friday night against the Washington Nationals. But we'll be back on, of course, tomorrow night for the Sixers heat game. And be this questionable, and so is Tyrese Maxey. Two balls, two strikes to Merrifield. The next pitch fouled away, and we'll do it again. Witt, who's now 35 years old, was drafted by the Royals, went to South Carolina College. 2-2, low again, just a bit outside for ball three. He's looking to try to get a hit here, just as one on the season. Cold night at the bank. Three balls, two strikes. Phillies down to their final strike. And the payoff pitch. Fouled away again. And the Phillies stay alive. Just one hit in 10 at-bats coming into today. Diaz gets set at the belt, winds up, and delivers the pitch. Another foul ball. So Merrifield's not going down without a fight. And he's certainly battling eight pitches in this at-bat. And the pitch count up to 17 for Diaz. Bohm waits in the on-deck circle. Three balls, two strikes, base is empty. And the pitch to Merrifield. Another foul ball towards the third base side. The bouncer. Ten seconds left on the pitch clock. And a 3-2 pitch. Swing and another foul ball just behind the plate. Hit the, the net. I got to give him credit here for staying alive. Hopefully he can win this battle. If Bohm does, if, if Merrifield gets on, then it's Bohm. And then if he gets on, then Schorber's the tying run. The 3-2 on the way. Line drive out the center field. Coming in is Benson. He can't make the catch. It bounces in front of him. And Merrifield gives the Phillies a little bit of life. A single out the center field. That was a very impressive at-bat by him. And now Alec Bohm is coming up to the plate. With the way that the wind is blowing there, it is cold. So here's Bohm. He came in to pinch hit for Rojas. And the first pitch is just inside. And Merrifield will go over to second base. Bohm was coming off the bench. Struck out looking in the seventh. The 1-0 on the way. Swing and a miss on a four-seamer at 93 miles per hour. And that's what's coming, that thunder. Merrifield's over at second. He advanced on the defensive indifference. One ball, one strike to Alec Bohm. Phillies down 4-1 to one in the bottom of the ninth to the Reds. Two outs. Diaz gets set, kicks, delivers, and it's fouled off. And the Phillies again down to their final strike. Comeback is alive. That's what Snooter says. Schwarber does wait in the on-deck circle. 10.34 p.m. Eastern time. Eight seconds left on the pitch clock and the one-two on the way. Swinging the line drive out to right field, and it will be caught just on the track by Benson. It was a hot shot over towards him. Had to turn over his shoulder, and he just made the catch, and that's the ball game. So the Phillies lose by a final score of 4-1. to one. 
And that's how they end the series. You know, when we've been on here, we are 0-4. We're 0-4 on here. So the two games that we've missed, the Phillies have won. I see a pattern here potentially. But Frankie Montas becomes the player of the game. He went five and two-thirds. He allowed five hits, had five strikeouts on 100 pitches. And, well, after a three-hour and 55-minute rain delay, the Phillies only put up one run and just had six hits. That was it. The next telecast, or the next uh, time that we'll be doing a Phillies game, will be on Friday when the Phillies take on the Nationals at 645. Uh, yeah, this was really annoying. This was really annoying. Uh, I'll give you a little bit of some analysis here before we go. Um, this was tough. Uh, this was another series where you really should have taken care of business, and it was just disappointing. Uh, the number one reason why you lost, the, the bats are just so cold. The bats are really, really cold, and they need to start heating up soon. Harper did a great job yesterday, but come on, man. Thanks so much for the stream. I appreciate you guys being on here. Again, if you would like to donate to the channel, please feel free to do so. Um, you know, you certainly don't have to, but any sort of donation is a plus. We're on here for the Sixers, the Phillies, and the Eagles. Who is going to be on here tomorrow night for the Sixers game? Comment down below. There we go. Uh, and this one belongs to the Reds. Thanks for the stream, brother. Thank you guys for coming on here. Jim says, great job, JJ. Thank you. And John says, thank you. Thank you, guys. Switch over to the Cubs-Rockies ending. I can't, man, because I don't, have the t I don't have it on TV. And plus, I waited like four hours for this game. I need to, like, get up. <laughs> I do. So I love you all. I'll catch you on the next one. Be on here tomorrow night. Philly uh, Sixers will be on at 7.30, taking on the heat. We'll have you on that one. I love you guys. Just another loss where you really felt like that they just came out so flat and they got to do a better job hitting-wise. That's the number one thing. Love you. Catch you on the next one. Good night.